We're standing in the middle of a uh, winter wheat field. It's, it's the beginning of March, or end of March, and uh, w what types of things are we looking for in the spring? Okay, the first thing you want to look at is how good did the winter wheat crop come through. Now, most of Ontario this year, the winter wheat crop's in good shape. But areas like this little knoll here, where it was probably windswept, not as much snow, a lot colder, and, and there's a little bit of winter kill here. Um, in terms of winter kill across the province, though, we really have very little. You almost, you really have to look for it to try and get some winter kill. But the first thing is just uh, to assess the stand to see how good it is. Next thing to do is take a look at plant count. And Rob, my foot is 12 inches. So when I put my foot down, that's uh, 12 inches, and now I know that uh, I can just count the number of plants along my foot and then have an assessment of, of how good the stand is. I like to see at least eight plants per foot of row. You know, in the fall, we probably drop 23 to 25, and if we have eight in the springtime, that's lots enough. And typically, you know, you, you put your foot down, you count, and then you get an idea. And then rather than counting every place, once you uh, have an idea how many plants are here, there's about uh, uh, 13 to 20 plants in different places right around this area. You get an idea of how many plants there are and, and then you go from there. So that if a grower, say, did some different seeding rates or did a starter fertilizer or did some trials, now's a good time just to take a look. Did, did that make any difference in the number of plants per foot of row? Did it make a difference in the winter kill? Okay. How many, uh, how many plants per foot of row are we looking for as a target number? Well, I like to have a minimum of eight. You know, the book would say seven. Eh, I want a little bit of leeway there. And, you know, really it's nice if you have ten. Because if you have ten and, and you're out a little bit, that's okay. And you have to you have to start digging them up until you are sure that you're counting plants and not tillers. Um, uh, you know, we're talking about plant count in terms of, of what's going on. So while we're talking about that, what do you think of tillers? Is, uh, should we be promoting tillers at this time of year, or what well, should we be doing? Uh, Rob, I think tillers, for uh, a large part, are overrated. Uh, now this plant here has got, uh, you know, it's just starting on, on a tiller. This one here has got, uh, you know, three oh. well-established tillers. Um, you, I'm going to throw that one away, but here you can see the uh, one, two, three well-established tillers. And when you're staging it, uh, we use uh, you know the Zadix stage, and, and you start counting tillers. So this would be at a Zadix 23. Once you get into to, uh, tillers, it's in the 20, and because there's three tillers now, it's Zadix 23. I'm not as keen on tillers as some people are. And the reason is that probably you're only going to have one, perhaps one and a half of these tillers actually produce heads. And, and to me, that's a waste of energy. Now, the counter argument is that you need these tillers to fill up the growing space to get as much energy as possible. But if you have a good seeding rate and good survival, you don't really need them. So then the d discussion about getting on nitrogen to promote early tillering is sort of academic. Uh, Tillers are nice, but they are sort of uh, useless. They will eventually die off and then move the nutrients. I'd rather just have more plants per foot of row, have them all even, have all the heads come flowering at the same time, and not have as less, um, not have as less chance of fusarium. However, if you are out early and find that you do have a thin stand, that's when you really want to promote those tillers. Okay, and uh, 